In this episode, I'm having a conversation with Drew Solon, founder of Connected Dads and co-host of the Dad Central podcast. Drew shares how the traumatic experience of being abducted at only three years old taught him a powerful lesson about what fatherhood is and what fatherhood is not. Drew also shares how he got a second chance at growing up with a great dad and what he learned from powerful male role models in his life. He'll give you four critical character building lessons that he learned through sports and from his coaches. But Drew will also teach you how life's challenges and obstacles can help you build the leadership skills that you need to become the powerful leader in your home so that you can lead where it matters most with your children. Drew will also give you four A's and four F's of his coaching philosophy of what he walks men through in his Connected Dads program so that they can develop the leadership skills necessary to truly becoming a dad making a difference. This conversation with Drew Solon starts right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome to another episode of the Dads Making a Difference podcast. My name is Cam Hall. I'm your host and founder of the Dads Making a Difference Mastermind Group. No man really knows how to be a great dad from day one. There is no cheat code. There is no how-to guide that lays it all out for you. It's not a talent that's inborn. It comes with training. It comes with education. It comes from learning from our experiences, uh, aka learning from our mistakes, Likewise, becoming a strong leader in your home is a continuous process of learning and growth. Yet there are essential skills every father must develop in order to be able to lead himself first so that he can lead where it truly matters in the home. Joining me today is Drew Solon. Drew is co-host of the Dad Central podcast and founder of of Connected Dads. Drew is an incredible dad who is dedicated to helping fathers like him learn the essential parenting skills all fathers must possess. You'll be amazed to find out how Drew's traumatic childhood experience of being abducted when he was three years old by his biological father and then returned to his biological mother at age seven paved the way for the foundation of Drew's work. If you're listening to this and you're wondering about what it takes to be a better parent, to be a stronger leader in your home so that you can be there for your children and be a great dad despite growing up not having a positive personal experience when it comes to fatherhood, then you'll find this episode extremely useful. My guest today is Drew Solon, and he says that if you want to change the world, that it starts with having dads being more positively involved in the home and in the lives of their children. My conversation with Drew Solon starts right now. Drew, thanks for joining us today on the Dads Making Difference podcast, brother. It's good to have you on. Thank you, Kim. It's a real honor to be here. I just love having these types of conversations, so I'm looking forward to it. You know, and we've been able to connect a couple times. Uh, I don't want to say offline because it's always been online. It's always been through a Zoom, Uh, but I was... Man, I really appreciate being able to be on your podcast, and I'm glad that you're here to share your story with the Dads Making a Difference podcast and with our audience. So, you know, Drew, I know a little bit about you. I have read your story, and man, you have you have an incredible story, not only as a dad, you know, with, you know, twin daughters and son, but as growing up, and you had man, you had an event in your childhood that absolutely transformed your life. So, uh, Drew, if you know, mom, why don't you dive into your story, kind of um, where you grew up and what got you to where you're at today? Yeah, thanks, Kim. Um, You know what? I guess my story starts uh, as early as three years old, even before that, really. But uh, the, the real signature moment, I guess, was three years old when I was actually abducted by my biological father. And uh, for the next four years, uh, we lived uh, in New York City, then Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica, and then in St. Louis, Missouri. So for four years, I was, my dad was essentially, you know, off living his life, but with me, um, because he didn't have custody of me. And so he had 
um you know in the dispute with my mom and and separation and all other stuff he he decided to take me with him um which obviously wasn't a, you know, it wasn't the, the right thing to do um so but my mom to her credit she spent all that time trying to find me uh there were no laws about parental abduction back then this was like 1983 and so everywhere she went they're like oh well the kid's dad has him so no one would help her can you imagine that your child disappears you have custody and no wow. one's really helping you so, you know, she's basically my hero because she just did everything she could. After about a year, she found where I was. Mm. Um, but police in Jamaica were like, no, we can't help you, essentially. There's no jurisdiction. Anyways, there's a whole lot to that story. But, um, you know, that was the the foundational experience of my first sort of 10 years in life. And um, she got the laws changed in the state of Missouri one night, um, sitting in the house with my dad and his girlfriend at the time. Mm. And there's a knock at the door and then like police come storming in. And then it's like, I'm whisked upstairs. There's this person trying to talk to me, probably a social worker at the time, you know, you get a bag, get some things. And so I'm getting clothes. Next thing you know, I'm in the front of a police cruiser. Uh, and then I, I get wow. the next two nights. I'm in uh, a, a foster home one night, such a strange place, strange experience. And then another foster home the next night. And then on that third day, I get brought to a um, a courthouse and, and then I meet my biological mother as part of this process meanwhile just you know and so i recognized her but i was like i didn't really know who she was so anyway so that experience was kind of how you know my first seven years were so at seven i returned home with my mom and then that kind of started the rest of my life mm. so um you know that's and then you know through high school and there's uh you know there's some experiences that happen there's the counseling that was part of just that whole recovery process um you know just just a lot going on as as you grow um and as you move into the other life and you know then you layer on top of that you know i did see my father again when i was 13 and then when i was 18 two very different experiences but him not really being in my life was um was a challenge i'd say but when i was 18 i remember saying to my mom you know cuz she always wanted to talk about it i was like i want to talk about this no like right i don't need to talk about this it's a past it's in my past I don't need to talk about this. I just want to move on with my life and, and, you know, get on with it. You know, anyways, she's wise, but we'll probably get into it more, but that yeah. was a big part of that. And so, I mean, adult life has brought me to kind of where I am now. There's a lot, I guess, in the mix. I'm not sure how much you want me to share, but I want, I'll just start with that and we can build from there. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's build from there. What a story. And you've told this story before and I've read it before uh, on your connected dad's website, the true story. And I read, it, I was like, what? <laughs> like abducted three years old. You don't see your mom again until you're seven. Right. And you go through this more or less this traumatic experience, maybe not understanding at that age, what it meant and everything that was going on, but you have a line in, in your story, when you, you have it on your website, it's say, I, I was sitting there across from my mother, someone who I, I vaguely recognized, but I didn't know. And for four years, you knew being with your father and, you know, jumping from place to place, like you said, your mom's your hero. You said that I admire that man. Like my mom is, you know, my mom was one of my heroes too. Tell me about growing up with your mom. Tell me about being in that home. Tell me about being, um, yeah. Did you have like a strong male figure in your life or was it just like you and mom and, and pounding out? Yeah. Well, I was fortunate that my mom, uh, very wise, um, but also just had, so she remarried. I'm not saying she's wise because she remarried. She's a wise person, but this was a wise <laughs> choice as well. Yeah. Um, in terms of who she selected and um, ultimately became my stepdad, who's still, she's still married to this day. He's still in my life. They were just, you know, mm -hmm. stopped in this morning. Uh, so we had a little chat. Um, so growing up with her and then at 10 years old, Jim, my stepdad coming into my life, you know, we were, sports became a big part of my life. I, I got involved with sports at nine. Jim was very supportive, always driving me to and from the events. Um, you know, school was important. My mom was, uh, you know, very uh, diligent with ensuring I was uh, you know, going to school, doing my homework, getting involved in positive pursuits, positive outlets for my energy or my thoughts or or even some of the, you know, the other stuff that would have been come from a, that traumatic childhood experience. Right. Uh, that experience um helped ground me in, I think, fundamental things built from sports, but also built from the values that both Jim and my mom held at home. And 
values like you know honesty, uh, respect, um, hard work, discipline. Those things are a big part of my growing up experience. And I think then you know setting goals and and working hard to achieve those goals. Um, but also being able to relate and, you know, faith was a big part of my upbringing. You know, my parents um, attended church. Uh, they wanted me to attend church. They weren't militant about it. Yeah. They just encouraged me. And, you know, at like 14, I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to go. And so they're like, okay with that. Um, but they modeled it in terms of how they live their life. And so that's really what it was like for me growing up, having that influence. And the other part is I had some really fantastic other men uh, who are my coaches, uh, who, who spoke into my life. So I remember Bruce Boyd, my high school uh, football coach. He was my first coach, a fantastic man, a um, wonderful coach. And then I remember Al Craigie. He was my you know coach in pretty much everything else uh, and also senior football at Richview. Um, and then in my early, like just before I turned 20, you know, I, I started um, at Western and I played football there and I had Larry Haler. Uh, he's one of the only, I think, college coaches inducted into the CFL Hall of Fame. And he was a Amazing. fantastic man, but a fantastic coach. And so those male influences, I feel very grateful to have had in my life that helped support as I've just grown as, as an adult. That's incredible. You know, those, it might not be like a father figure, but having positive male interactions and having mentors to guide you along the way is such a huge part. Uh I'm a product of sport and coaches and teams as well. And when people ask me why I recommend kids get involved in sport, yeah, there's the, the physical health and mental health side of it, but it's also being surrounded by people who can speak into your life and challenge you to grow and challenge you to be more than what, what you are. And it's pretty cool that you had that experience and you went into post-secondary, you got to play sport there, which, you know, what type of lessons did you learn? Maybe this shift just for a second, because I'm passionate about sport. What kind of lessons did you learn through your experience playing football that, you know, have carried with you now to being a dad? Mm. Yeah, that's a great question. I actually wrote a, a LinkedIn article uh, a few years ago. Uh, about six life lessons from my Hall of Fame coach, Larry Haler. Uh, and they all relate to stories and, ex you know, from that experience and, you know, the, the uh, phrases that he would use, those types of things. But uh, I think the three or four that I can talk about here is uh, the importance of, of self-discipline. So if you're not able to um, make the right choices and do the right things, um, you're probably not going to achieve some of the goals that you set out for yourself. That's certainly very important. The value of teamwork. I mean, I believe I'm biased. If you're not a football fan, that's okay. But just take this. I believe football is the ultimate team sport. Mm -hmm. You know, one person of the 11 or 12, if you're a CFL or NFL fan, um, one person can make or break a huge play. And if that one person doesn't do their job on a given play, it can be a significant difference. And so ultimately, you all have to be working cohesively together, knowing your role, but doing it collectively to achieve your your goals. And so I think teamwork is just so foundational um, when it comes to a valuable lesson learned. I think the importance of commitment, you know, sometimes it's hard to keep doing what you want to do. And you got to be committed, right? Things don't always go your way. Um, and how do you handle that? Which then leads to, you know, dealing with adversity. Like when things don't go your way, what are you going to do? How are you going to handle that? Are you going to crumble and fold and give up? Or are you going to do everything you can to fight and scratch and claw to get what it is that you're working towards? And so, I mean, those are just four I can rattle off, but there's even a lot more. Um, but those are, to me, pretty critical and i think something that i try to apply not perfectly but i try to apply in my day-to-day -day. yeah amazing thanks for sharing and i think a couple of those i think about discipline the importance of discipline you know and what that means as a father and i don't mean disciplining your kids i mean just sticking to the path and doing what you need to do uh, but you, you mentioned adversity and everyone has a story you know, well, your story, you were abducted as a child and you went through that and you alluded to processing through some of that when you got older, because you didn't want to talk about it when you were a youth or a teenager, but in, in your life, as you started to grow and where I want to head is how you're working with dads now with connected dads and with that essential, but as you were growing, 
through that adversity, what were some of the challenges that you faced, you know, of course, some things from your past, but, you know, maybe personally, professionally, athletically, what were some things that you challenged that challenged you along the way? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, how much time do we have? I, I'd say that <laughs> jokingly because yeah. it feels at times that there's nothing but challenges. Yeah. And if I look at personally, challenges, professionally, challenges, you know, it's it's been a, a difficult road at times. And so some of it may be self-inflicted. Uh, some of it uh, is just life you, you got to deal with it and you, you, you don't have control over a lot of these different elements. And so, I mean, if, if I just start, let's say professionally, so I worked in a very unhealthy environment, um, and learning how to lead at an early age in an unhealthy environment, but not having the knowledge or skill to effectively influence. I think that was something that I really had to learn. And I fortunately will have been able to learn that some lessons harder than others, but because I kept working at it and I, I believed it was important, I was able to make progress. I think learning to deal with difficult people, um, learning about my strengths, um, what I was really passionate about, and then moving towards it. Those, those are some challenges. Like I didn't really fully know myself all that well, um, both in the journey of um, like a professional, but also in the journey of, of just life, um, being a, a husband, a young husband, and then ultimately becoming a young father. And so I wasn't that young. I mean, I'm being a father who is inexperienced, I guess. And then another challenge for me is overcoming fear. I actually wrote about that in that article I referenced, yeah. um, that fear did control me a lot. I didn't realize it, though. And so, I, I don't know. I think some of those are see, the challenges that really uh, impacted me as I thought, of, as I kind of grew and grew things. And so when you think about transition and things that I'm going through now, I think the most, the one that's the most challenging and relates to the father piece is seeing myself not showing up for my kids or making mistakes that um, were things I'm like, I'll never do that. Mm -hmm. But then I did it. Uh, or I won't be that way. But then it's like, oh my goodness, like I, I've never been stretched so thin like this in my life. And I, it's like, I'm about to snap. And so those are, I think, were uh, situations that were the hardest because it's like my goal was to be the exact opposite of that yeah. and sometimes I, I was not behaving in the way that I wanted to behave and so that was very painful that's probably the biggest challenge I'd say wow I'm glad you brought that up because I know there's a lot of men who heard you say that and maybe let out a little bit of a sigh of relief knowing that they're normal too that they mm -hmm. struggle with the same thing about managing all the demands of being a dad, being a professional, being a husband, being all the things that others expect of you. And all we want to do as dads is we want to show up and be our best for the people that matter most. And that is one of, I don't know, I don't want to call it a, mo a model for you, but you started Connected Dads with that purpose in mind to help men build the leadership skills, to become the leaders they need to be, to show up for the people who matter most. Tell us a little bit about Connected Dads, how that started and, and what you work on today. Yeah. Well, thanks for that, Cam. Connected Dads came out of my own struggles, my own desire to be the best husband, the best father, the best man that I could be and not feeling like I had the resources, not feeling I had the mentors, not feeling like I had, you know, a father of my own that I could reach out to, to help me get to where I wanted to go. And I want to say this caveat about, you know, my stepdad, Jim, wonderful mm -hmm. man, great man. And it's not that he wasn't there for me. It's just that some of the experiences that I was looking to pursue were not experiences that he had in his life. So he mm. didn't really have a frame of reference that he could um, speak into that part of my life. Mm. So it was without that, that I couldn't, you know, kind of, I felt a little bit like a little, like a ship without a rudder. I'm like, okay, I, I got an engine. I want to go, but I'm not sure if I'm you know going in the right direction. And so, uh, and I realized that we're all better together. When I think back on my team experience, you know, the accountability, the camaraderie, you know, the, you know, this idea that iron sharpens iron mm. is something that was fundamental to me. I said, okay, well, if it's not out there, then why don't I just create it? And I know that there are other men out there who 
probably have these same passions that I do. And why don't we create, I create a space for them. And why don't I leverage, you know, a, a mentor of mine, John Maxwell, who'd been in my life since 2011 and say, this has been so powerful for me. How about we all come together and work through this stuff together so that we can then take it and apply it to our lives and apply it to our partners and apply it to our children and see the transformational impact. So that's really where it came from, my struggle and a mm -hmm. desire to leverage the background, the experiences that I had, and also selfishly to, to learn and grow from others. I wanted to be surrounded by people who had the same aspirations or were ahead of me in the process so that I could learn. That was the real goal. Yeah, excellent. I'm going to pack. You said so much there. It's so good. I just want to unpack a little bit of what you said about, you know, Jim was there for you, but he didn't have the experiences in his life that you were looking to have in yours and be able to shape you there. You know, there, there are men listening right now who didn't have a gym, like who didn't have a, a positive male role model, who didn't have a positive father figure or grew up fatherless, which in our society now is way too common. How do men who have not had a positive father figure in their lives successfully step into that leadership role as a father? Mm. Yeah, I think that's a really a great question and something that I've had to wrestle with myself. And you know, John Maxwell uh, came into my life in 2011. Uh, I won't bother. It's an interesting story, but I won't bother to tell you. And so, you know, he became this mentor for me, especially around the place of leadership. And But um, it starts, and he's got a simple saying, it's you must know yourself yes. to grow yourself. Yeah. And so if I don't have a mentor, I don't like it. It all starts with that, knowing that I have this goal, where am I at? And once you're able to do that, then you start to say, well, where do I need to invest? And mm -hmm. what are the things that I need to do? To, and, and I have this, you know, this four A's coaching philosophy, you know, awareness, alignment, activation, and then accountability. And so the way that I approach out for with dads is that, you know, knowing yourself starts there, then you have to make alignment and that's knowing and understanding your goals. And then what are the daily choices you're making and are they moving you closer to your goals or are they moving further away from your goals? And so once you do that, align yourself with your awareness of who you are, your goals and the actions you're taking, then it's about creating the right mindset. Our thoughts dictate our feelings, which usually drive our actions. Right. And so you must think the right thoughts. How do you view yourself? How are you seeing your circumstances? What is your perspective on, you know, the elements that are going on in your life? And are you in a very negative mindset? Or are you in a very positive mindset? What are, what are the thoughts you're thinking and how are they translating into what's going on in your life? And so that's the activation piece. Find the right thoughts. Think the right thoughts then it's about accountability. Hmm. What do you need to do to hold yourself to follow through on the alignment that you've added and the thoughts that you needed to be thinking? And that accountability is best with at least one trusted person, but always better in groups as well, right? And so that's the idea of, of Connected Dads is that you come together you you learn these things and then you hold each other accountable because it makes a significant difference to your ability to follow through and achieve those goals. So I yeah. think it starts with those that process. Yeah, man, you're speaking my language. Like I love this. That's the reason behind dads making a difference, right? That the power of community, mm -hmm. um, the power of surrounding yourself with inspired men, men who want to grow, men who are vulnerable, men who don't have it all figured out, but are willing to serve and help others. Um, Man, I love it. I, I love what I love about your story and your mission too, is that it's real, right? There's a lot of guys out there who have um, a business that more for the lack of a better word, targets dads, targets men, uh, views them as, as something to be shaped in their likeness or in their mission. But what you do is you meet guys where they're at and then you help them transform to become better versions of themselves. But as a father, you know, you've gone through some of your own transitions as well, some periods of growth for you. Have you been able to, how have you been able to 
stay focused on what matters most when we have these distractions come up in your life? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think I'll start by saying I appreciated your point about vulnerability, you know, authenticity, not always having it all figured out. And I'll have to say that I haven't always been able to do that, mm. just to be real. Yeah. And the but what I have had that's helped me either get back on track uh, or to stay focused on what matters most um, through some difficulties. Uh, you know, maybe I like the acronyms or the you know ways to remember things, but I have four F's that okay. have really helped me. Right, and so this for me is foundational. It may not be everyone else's um, go to, but faith is a, a critical piece of my life. It's mm -hmm. always been a grounding for me. And that faith has been something that in the storms of life, I have at least had an anchor to cling to when otherwise I may feel completely lost. So that's been one. Friends, uh, I have some, been blessed with great um, friends in my life. These, these men, um, some I've grown up with and some have become friends in my adult life. And they are people that I can call on. And I can speak to, and I can, you know, vent to, uh, or they can call me out or yeah. speak truth into me when yeah, I'm not, I'm not too. really <laughs> seeing it. Yeah. Right. Uh, or they can challenge me just because of who they are, not because like they're even trying to challenge me. It's just, I hear their story and I'm like, man, I feel convicted. I'm like, I want to, I want to maybe meet that standard myself. Okay, cool. But because those people have been in my life, it's been crucial yeah. family. I mean, I talked about my mom being my hero, Jim, my stepdad always being there for me. I know he's got my back no matter what. You know, I have been blessed with wonderful parents and not everyone has that. And so that's been a crucial piece for me. And uh, fitness, you know, I grew up playing sports. Uh, health um, is important to me. Just longevity is important to me. Plus, it just feels good. I enjoy feeling fit and strong and healthy. And quite frankly, it's a fantastic stress relief. Yeah. You know, if I need to clear my mind, there's nothing better than a great workout to clear my mind. So those are the four F's for me that help me stay focused on what matters most. And if I keep those consistent in my life, then I see the difference. Amazing. Amazing. I'm writing them, like typing them all down as you're going, because I think these are great. The four A's that you share, the four F's that you share. Um, I hope you guys are taking notes. And if you're not, then you need to come back to this and re-listen to this because Drew is sharing just amazing value right now. Uh, you have connected dads. You started that a little while ago, but you've also been involved in something pretty special called Dad Central. Tell us about Dad Central. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Dad Central has been about around about 20 years. And our uh, vision is that there's an involved child or involved father for every child. Hmm. You know, our mission is really to connect, educate, and empower dads and communities to build healthy children together. And so what that, and the reason is because so much research is unequivocally clear. When you have a positively involved father in the life of a child, every single developmental mile marker is improved. Hmm. And I'm not just talking about slightly improved, like significantly improved. So you want to, this is my biased belief. You want to change the world. It starts by having dads more positively involved at home in the lives of their children. And then they're going to grow up to be much more confident, much more successful, much more valuable contributors to the world. And they're going to change the world themselves. So that's my bias. So Dad Central was built off of research. Hmm. What does research say about child development when a father is positively involved in that child's life from birth till you know, whatever age. And the more research is done, the more reams and reams of evidence it is that fathers make a significant difference in the lives of children. And so from that, Dad Central then started to create resources, resources that trained and educated family service organizations mm -hmm. that are focused on helping raise healthy children, but they were missing anything about fathers. They didn't even talk everything. And don't take this the wrong way, but everything was all about mom. Yeah. Mom, mom, mom. Well, guess what? There's two parents and you're missing a huge piece of the puzzle if you don't at least engage and support fathers to be more positive. So we trained them about one, the value of fathers and two, how to engage them. Yeah. And then 
we built resources that they could put into the hands of dads that gave dads answers to the questions that they were asking. So that's what dad central is. questions. Like when guys come to you or guy you're in conversation with men, um, a lot of guys have just heard it's about mom. It's about mom. It's about mom. I, you know, our, our system is kind of set up that way too. And guys start to feel a little bit pushed out uh, that, and they start to have this feeling that they're not as important in the home, but research says, says otherwise like you are super important in the home and there's guys listening to this right now who feel a little bit on the outside looking in who want to get more involved and so when guys come to you drew like what are they asking you like what are they struggling with what questions do they have Mm -hmm. well there's actually quite a bit in what you just shared there cam and i think there's two parts to what you shared so i'll start with the last part of the question which is what are they asking about Mm -hmm. well dad struggle with really three key areas and this is built off of research plus you know just my some of my experience so really it's like parenting skills and kind of the confidence you said they feel pushed out well it's like well and they think that their role is not important so there you have two significant problems right which then impact confidence or your investment in even wanting to build your skills and so like parenting skills for dads you know it's really you know dealing with discipline or or tantrums or staying calm being patient those are the common things around some of the parenting skills. Another one that I think is critical and is often, I think, majority missed is empathy. Hmm. Empathy and listening skills are so critical when it comes to dealing with children at all ages and stages of development, but especially around those critical change times, toddler years, like preteen years, adolescence, critical. And if you get that wrong, it has a significant negative impact potentially for your relationship with the children. It can be repaired, but that's where you really need that skill of empathy and listening. Um, the other area is balance. Hmm. How do you balance all these demands? You yeah. work, home, right. my health. Like, how do you, you know, chaos, pandemic, like, every, like, how do you, when you keep stacking it on, how do you balance it all and maintain your sanity or e- any well being? So that's a big problem. And then feeling this, that you've got the resources, both financial or social resources to be able to create that stable, happy, loving home that you want to create. If you're like, I'm always stretched thin. I don't have resources and nobody cares about dads. You know, I go to the ultrasound. I'm not even allowed to go into the ultrasound room. Um, I go to the doctors and they don't even talk to me. They don't even look at me. Like there are a lot of things that are just, you don't realize, but they tend to potentially marginalize or push dads out to the outskirts and they don't feel that they're valued. So those are some thoughts. Yeah. Awesome, man. I just like, I think about some of the conversations I've had with men in the last little bit and what you just shared is exactly where they're coming from. Like they're, they're feeling, I don't know, like this dads are significant. You, you are, if you're listening to this right now and you're a father, you play a significant role in the life of your children. And it is okay to step forward, to stand up and to challenge yourself to be better. That's okay. And right now guys are a, a little bit like, well, if I do this, am I going to be looked upon as I'm trying to take control away from my wife or trying to, no. Okay. If you're listening to this, listen to Drew reach out, get some resources from dadcentral.ca, but step forward, like be better for the people who matter most, be better for your family. Um, yeah, Drew, you're just sharing so much, man. I could just unpack so much of what you're doing. Well, can uh, I comment on something you just, yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, so you mentioned, um, you know, they might uh, feel like you're trying to take control. Yeah. The reality is, is that may be true. Yeah. They may, and it all depends. Everything starts with good relationship development skills, hmm. right? So I talked about empathy and listening. They're foundational, good really, but it's also understanding healthy relationships. What, what does makes that look health- like? Yeah. Yeah. What does a healthy, and well, you, you need to understand and learn about healthy relationships with a partner, with anyone else, and making sure that you are doing everything that you can. You have no control of another person. You have no control over what they're going to think or how they're going to react. What you have control over is your responses or how you approach things. And so I think those are fundamental skills that fathers can improve on that then also support the being able to get in there and be supported getting in there. So we don't bulldozing your way in 
not the way to go. Yeah. Just saying I'm important, so I should be there, not the way to go. But doing it in a way that builds a positive, um, healthy dynamic that sees your role and the value you have as important and gets support for that is important. And that's how you step up. Yeah, awesome. You know, I don't want this to be misinterpreted by the guys who are listening here. Like we're not saying you need to add more to your plate. We're saying you just need to take a different approach to what you're doing, like to, to be more present, to be more intentional, to build these relationships. Uh, but guys right now, they are, like you said a few moments ago, are trying to balance so much the demands of their life. And I encourage guys sometimes to let things go. Like there's things that you need to let go or stop doing in order to do the things that matter most. So I have a question for you. I ask these questions often to guys. What's something in your life uh, that you've removed so that you could be a better father? That's a good question. And one that I really have to think hard about. There's been a lot of change just for me personally in the last mm, three years. I think the what comes to mind the most is expectations. I think I've had to let go of some of my expectations of both of myself and of other people. I hold myself to maybe an unreasonably high standard, which maybe some guys can relate to. And I tend to be pretty hard on myself if I don't maybe meet those expectations. And so I've had to let go of some of those unrealistic, unmanageable expectations, as well as I've had to let go of holding myself uh, to an unreasonable standard um, and just be okay with, you know, I don't want to say be okay with okay, but be okay with the fact that there's only so much you can do, Drew. You can't do it all. You can't, you know, stretch yourself so thin and carry all this weight uh, and still expect to show up perfectly calm and patient and reasonable and doing anything, you know, you need. And you also need to learn what do you need to take care of yourself first mm. instead of taking care of all these other people. So I think I've had to let go of those things yeah. and that's been important and it's still a journey, still a process, uh, still struggle with it, but getting better as I get confronted with it more often and recognize it sooner. That awareness piece I talked about, yeah. the sooner you recognize it, the sooner then you can make a conscious choice. Yeah, I love it. Making conscious choices, making decisions, eliminating things that are distractions. Like these are all processes of growth. And these are all things that when you're a guy who's inspired to grow, there's steps that you take. Um, for you, I'm going to shift gears a little bit, not so much about like what you're trying to eliminate or something you've changed, but what are you most excited about right now as a dad? What's one area of growth that you've committed to in the next little bit? Yeah, well, I'm excited to enter a little bit of a new phase of my life uh, and my fatherhood. And my kids are getting a little bit older. They're uh, surprising me with their awareness, their intelligence. So my my daughters are nine; they're turning ten in February. My son is seven, who just he just turned seven in October. And so we're in a new phase where I think I can have real conversations with them. I can instill important principles in them. I can model those principles. And if I'm not modeling those principles, they can all call me on it and see it very vividly. And so I'm really excited about what that means for the next few years as I as their maturity grows and what we can do as far as building the right foundation for them. So that for me is exciting because, you know, as a coach, Excellent. you know, you love to see people achieve their goals. And I'm like, well, who would, who would you rather do than your own children and see right. them become confident, successful, you know, and they're just amazing kids as it is. So to be able to support that um, is, is exciting for me. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks for sharing that. I always love to ask that of the people who come on the podcast and it's a different answer every time. And I love it. So mm -hmm. thanks for sharing and, and opening up a bit about that. 
Drew, you've shared so much. You shared so much on this episode. I'm going to go back and listen to it and unpack it. And I'm going to dig more into your stuff. But if someone wants to find you, they want to connect with you, they want to learn more about Connected Dads, Dad Central, or just more about you and your story, where can they do that? Well, the easiest is to go to connecteddads.ca. And you can email me at drew at connecteddads.ca. Those are the simplest and easiest ways. Uh, I do have uh, some social media channels, um, but they're not that active right now. So the easiest is email and the website, and that's the the best way. The other thing is for Dad Central, it's dadcentral.ca. And we're active on all the social channels, LinkedIn. We've got a YouTube channel. We've got a podcast. We've got free resources on dadcentral.ca. So lots of things. Just go to dadcentral.ca and that can be your one-stop shop for it. Excellent. Thank you, Drew. I appreciate your brother. Thanks for taking time to uh, be here and share with us today. It's been my honor, Cam. And thank you so much for the work you're doing. And I just hope it continues to impact the lives of dads everywhere. 